follow everything. And see all the different rope rings it will do. That's actually upside down. Better. Yeah, so you can see all the paths and you can see all the keys that it will leave so that it doesn't as it's cutting round, it, it won't come free in the, in the timber. So that's why those are there like that. So the blocks stay where they should be until they're... So welcome again to DNS Workshop uh, for an update on our NG15 Loco number 134. We last spoke to you in late summer um, where we uh, were at a stage just prior to steaming the boiler. The staff at Dinas uh, manufactured the steam pipes for us here, from the superheater header down to the cylinders and valve chests. And once these were fitted, 
Um, we steamed up the boiler in mid-September to make sure that the expansion joints on the back of the boiler that we spoke about last time all operated correctly when the boiler uh, heated up and cooled down again. Everything was fine with this test, also with the boiler. So we were able to move on to lagging and cladding of the boiler. Uh, and as we are now here in January, you can see that we've completed the lagging uh, and we uh, have manufactured uh, all the cladding that goes on top of the boiler. That's a very involved job. Uh, it took us quite a long time. Uh, first of all, rolling the sheets, cutting the sheets exactly to size. Uh, and then uh, once they are actually in the right uh, shape, we have to apply around five coats of paint. So they've had a lot of paint uh, by uh, different volunteers, actually in different locations, because you need quite a big space to, uh, to lay all those things out for painting. So we have uh, completed that and they're now on the loco, as you can see next to me. They'll still need a final rub down and varnish before uh, we're finished, but it is now starting to look like uh, the loco will when it, it first appears out on the line. So hopefully you can see the progress here uh, in front of us. After the lagging and cladding, we've also worked a lot on the cab, uh, as you can see in the background. So last uh, video, we were starting to work on the cab. We built the wooden mock-up cab previously. Uh, and that has proved out the, the size of the cab for the crew to operate in and also that it fits in the loading gauge of the railway according to the specification uh, for all the overbridges and clearances in uh, platforms and tunnels and cuttings. Um, now we've started to produce the, the real cab um, and that's also been subject to fabrication followed by shop lasting, then uh, several coats of paint uh, and then it's erected on the loco so that we can continue now with the pipe work for the various water system, oil system, the vacuum system, and the steam pipe work as well. Uh, also in this video clip, you'll see some of the pipe work being made today. That's the large copper pipe work that comes down from the manifold to the injectors, and also from the injector feeding into the boiler here at the top in the, uh, the non-return valve on top of the boiler. Right, so just moving back a bit on the loco, next to me is the cab roof fabrication, which was made at Boston Lodge, uh, and that's been also subject to uh, shop blasting. Um, not finished painted yet, but uh, some of the coats of paint on there. We won't fit the roof until later in, in the completion of the loco, because it makes it easier to do all the pipe work uh, on top of the boiler there when we don't have the roof on. Um, we've also been working on the loco on the uh, injectors, which are fitted now the back of the loco, the stainless pipe work that goes back to the tender for water supply, uh, and the brake gear is now all connected up with the return spring and the pull rods underneath um, so that the um, loco can uh, operate its steam brake in service. Um, and we'll try that with air uh, in the, uh, later today, actually, when we uh, bring the loco to the pit. The valve gear was assembled last time you saw us, but since then it's been uh, disassembled and all the pins been sent away for hardening. Uh, and that they've now been come back and been finally refitted and we are working on the setup now to ensure the mid gears are equal. We've done the clearances on the pistons and adjusted the piston rods and piston heads so that they operate centrally in the bores and the piston uh, valve heads are in but without rings until the final setup we will do uh, just before we, we move the loco. We're now working on the reverser uh, back into the cab. Um, to ensure that we've, we've got a slightly different layout than the original design in South Africa as we will be operating in the cab all the time, not sitting outside due to some of our narrow bridges. Uh, and that means we, we are having to move the reverser slightly in the cab, slightly forward. Uh, and, and so it's a bit of re-engineering on the length of the reach rod. Uh, but that's one of the next items we'll be doing alongside the pipe work. So now we uh, switch to the tender. Uh, the eagle eye will notice that at the moment the loco is 
positioned in the cab forward uh, configuration. Uh, that's purely because the tender keeps having to go out to the carriage shed due to space constraints. So we're shunting the tender in when we uh, have a chance to have it in the workshop and out again. But soon we hope to get the tender behind the loco to do the final pipe working connections. Nevertheless, we've uh, been able to progress it when it's in the workshop. Uh, and the main updates from last time uh, are on the brake gear, which uh, you can't really see underneath, but now we've got the, the handbrake completed uh, here right through to the, the new shaft underneath and the pull rod back to the brake gear, which is all assembled underneath the tender. Uh, and today when we put a, a final key in here, we're going to be able to try the handbrake itself uh, and test that everything is working fine. Most of the vacuum pipe work is on, so we hope to test that at the next working part as well. Uh, on the front of the tender, we've also been working to complete the cutouts for the sandboxes, which will go here and here for reverse running. Uh, and we've also produced the fabricated toolbox hoods uh, on, on both sides. So they're, they're mainly to protect um, also from the weather running backwards, the sandboxes, the handbrake, and there will be a locker storage on that side of the loco. Uh, and they're removable, so if we were to fit the... Uh, tender cab in the future. Those uh, mounting points have been made with the right strength and interface to mount the, the tender cab structure on uh, in case we, we decide to fit that later. Uh, and now on the tender we're also progressing the, the paint work so the, the paint crew have been in, volunteers again working uh, with us uh, on the working party but tending to come in in the afternoon when we finish with other work and a lot of filler and, and uh, uh, rubbing down of the sides of the tender and the top of the tender has already commenced and it's now due for a couple of coats of gloss and uh, be a similar stage as the loco and then we'll wait until we have finished with our mechanical works before it'll have a final rub down and varnish uh, before we go out into test runs. Um, and you should see um, more of the tender soon, hopefully behind the loco where we'll be working on the, those flexible connections for the vacuum system, the water system uh, and uh, safety chains which attach here on the tender and also underneath the loco at the rear of the frame uh, in case of any problem with the couplings that is the secondary uh, safety for the tender uh, in reverse running as well. Okay, here's another item we've added to the loco. This is the Pile National headlamp, which was kindly donated to us by Peter Knott. And we've installed now the LED lamp and the side lights to highlight the loco number. Uh, and we're looking forward to putting that also on the tender, uh, the next working party, to make sure that 134 can find its way down the Welsh Island Railway. <laughs>